Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence in your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookshelves covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures alongside their crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset and fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversations with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki, sound bowl, and crystal healing, and now they are offering witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. You can also find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop, as well as Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. As this podcast goes to air, we're moving through the full moon energies. The fourth supermoon, meaning very close to the earth, which is shining lots of light on the darkness. You might have felt an overload of emotions, especially if you're super sensitive like I am. But the full moon, and especially the days after, allow you the opportunity to embody your emotions and transmute all that heavy energy with all the light coming in. It is what is needed right now. And as we talked about last week, we don't want to hold these emotions for too long. We don't want them to become stagnant, nor do we want to bypass them. When you allow yourself to breathe through them, to feel them, you can transmute the energy out and return to a higher vibration for you. Need help with this? Now is the perfect time to build your spiritual practice. It's crazy how fast we are and how many people feel they cannot focus for seven seconds. Goldfish, right? You've heard that. But I can help you with that. It does take a little guidance. It does take a little practice. I can help you learn how to sit, how to breathe, very important, and even how to work with the energy of Reiki so that you can tap into your soul, understand your vibration, and learn more about yourself. It is necessary to learn how to work through these past traumas energetically, not just in the mental plane. And I can help you with that. I invite you to schedule a complimentary spiritual upgrade breakthrough call with me. And let's talk about your path, what you are wanting to work through and how you can build a practice just for you. My clients are saying they feel more alive, more confident and showing up fully at home and at work. I can help you learn how to move through difficulties in life and transitions to find the love for your soul that will inspire you. I'll put the links in the show notes. In today's episode, I am very excited to bring you the work of another spiritual author and teacher, a very well-known medium, Suzanne Giesman. What a delight to talk to her, very informative. Her latest book, Mediumship, Sacred Connections with Loved Ones from Across the Veil is the subject today as we round out the series on expanding consciousness. In this episode, we talk about mediumship, the spirit world as a state of consciousness, the three E's, grief, and how you can open up to the tools and feel the connections all around you. Very healing. Before we begin, let's take a moment to pause, center, and breathe and set an intention for where you are. So wherever you are, if you can, close the eyes. Taking a nice deep inhale, breathing up the body. And as you exhale, bring all your energy into you, call it in. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. Exhale, slowing down, all the way exhaling out. 
Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And as you exhale, begin to align your energy, calling in the spiritual body to align right on top of the mental, the emotional, the physical bodies. Centering, grounding. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And as you exhale, dropping right into the heart, right into the deepest part of your heart, feeling that connection, your spirit, the greater spirit, source, creator, God. Know that you are loved, guided, protected, feeling all this energy coming in around us as we call in the Reiki masters, calling in the teachers that have come before us, calling in the archangels to open the heart, to move through the emotions, calling in the crystal beings for amusement, magnification, calling in your higher self to align right above the crown to receive these messages for you. Inhale, breathing up the body. Exhale right into the heart, taking a moment and noticing where you are on this great wheel of life. Where I am, we find ourselves in the season of fall and as I teach, the direction of the west, where the sun sets each and every day. Allow yourself to feel this direction, the colors of the sunset, to recognize this wheel of life, the struggles, the release, the dying away, and the harvest, the gratitude for all of your work for this year. We call in to the west, the north, the east, and the south, above us, below us, right into the very center, setting an intention for your path. See and hear and feel and know this intention. And taking another deep inhale, allow those elevated emotions to radiate out through the exhale, setting the energy all around you, all through the aura. Taking one more deep inhale, and exhale, coming right back into the heart, feeling it opened. Feel the illumination of your third eye. And as you're ready, blinking the eyes back open, coming back. So my guest today, Suzanne Giesman, is a metaphysical teacher, author, and messenger of hope, recognized on the Watkins list of the 100 most spiritually influential living people. She is a former U.S. Navy commander who served as a commanding officer and as an aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Today, she guides people to the awareness of a greater reality. Suzanne is a best-selling author of 15 books, six he might sync recordings and YouTube videos with over 10 million views. She produces the Awakened Way app and hosts the popular Messengers of Hope podcast. Her gift of multi-dimensional communication has been verified by noted afterlife researchers, and her messages bring not only hope, but healing and love that goes straight to the heart. So let us welcome Suzanne to the show. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Oh, I am so excited to talk to you. I've been excited all day to get to meet you and talk to you. So thank you for being on our show today. Oh, wonderful. I've been looking forward to it all day, Terry. Thank, thank you so much. Yes. And congratulations on your latest book. You have many, but the mediumship, sacred communications with loved ones from across the veil. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Really pleased to be part of this series. I love their series. I really do. I love what they're putting out into the world for sure. Yeah. So I am a little familiar with your background, but I thought maybe we could start with that. Just telling a little bit about how you found this work and letting our listeners hear that. Yeah, I, I feel it's very important that people understand that I'm a, a spiritual teacher and a medium, but that was not my plan consciously for most of my life. I had no idea I would be doing this work. I joined the Navy out of college, got commissioned an officer and spent 20 years as a Navy officer, nine different tours of duty, two different foreign countries, served as a commanding officer, assistant to the head of the Navy, and then ultimately aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So I thought that was it, right? <laughs> I retired from the Navy, sailed off into the sunset with my husband, but life had other plans for me. Uh, you did. Yeah, unfortunately it 
that I had a wake up call. And that's what happens to a lot of people that start on the spiritual journey. I'm sure you talk to a lot of people that have. And that was, in my case, the death of my stepdaughter, Susan. She was a sergeant in the Marines crossing the flight line at work and was struck and killed by lightning. Mm. And at her funeral, I had an epiphany. I just knew, looking at her body, that the most basic essential aspect of her was missing, her spirit, her soul. I didn't know how I knew that. I know now that my soul was letting me know. Now the journey really begins. And I began meditating that week back in 2006, right after her funeral, and sitting every day and saying, Susan, show yourself to me. However that's going to unfold, I know you still exist. Let me connect with you. And she held back on purpose. She later told me for three years so that I could really learn to expand my consciousness. And in that daily practice of looking for her, I found so much more than I expected. Other people's loved ones, guides, angels, my own higher self, of course, all of that unfolded and has continued to unfold and turned into this whole different career, but really more of a mission for me that I never expected. I hear you. Yeah. yeah that, what a beautiful story. Yeah. My heart goes out to you, but look what did unfold. Mm -hmm. And I know I've had some of my own mishaps too, that have led me losing a baby early on that brought me into my spirit as well. And now I, I do what I call midwifing the soul. And I do help prepare bodies for funerals here in my community. And there mm -hmm. is a difference. You can feel when you walk in, like, like where the soul is, the body looks different, especially if you've been with the person previous and then after. So I totally do understand. Oh, and yeah. I totally agree with you that the consciousness is not held in the body, right? And that we can expand. But what a beautiful message. And two, I think it's important that the listeners hear that Many times you'll hear you'll hear mediums say, oh, I was gifted this or my grandmother or whatever. And so then people think, well, I can't do it. But I think as you share, we can. We can all learn to do some of this work. Now, I'm sure there's different degrees of being gifted once you start. And I think you talk about that like with piano playing and stuff. But what a beautiful way to come into this work and then carry on this mission. So I, that really is very interesting to hear your story about that. I teach classes and I've taught thousands of people that we all have this ability because we're souls. And so it's a matter of learning how to shift your focus, understanding what makes mediumship work. And I really dived into that and trying to make it very simple, opening up people's belief systems and then doing the practice. Yeah, I, I do like the way that you have explained it. I'm going to just ask you to tell us your definition of mediumship because you do explain it very well in the book, but how do you see that for yourself? My definition of mediumship is the practice of communicating with beings who are no longer in a body. I always ask people to do it with evidence so that we can validate it, but its purpose is to show the continuity of consciousness, that consciousness does not die when the body does. That's pretty much it. Continuity of consciousness. I love that. Yeah, which leads me to my next question, because I have been doing a series on expanding consciousness in many different ways. One of the things that jumped out at me was when you asked, like, where's the spirit world in the book? And yeah. then your answer became, it is a state of consciousness. We all think of like heaven, right? Like up there in heaven. But yeah. I loved how you explained that. Can you just expand on that for us a little? Yes, that we in our human bodies are fields of energy and information, consciousness, Without the body, we are fields of energy and information, consciousness. So when the body dies, we as a field don't go anywhere. We continue to exist only without the body. So it's a higher vibration that because of the body, because of the brain, most people aren't aware of and aren't able to tune into other beings' fields. But it's really analogous to channels on a network. You just change the channel through intention and fine tuning this human antenna. I love that. Yeah. I mean, we talk about that in a simple form with Reiki. We fine tune the energy system. So it's the same idea. Like you say in the book, like you can work with the angel realm and you can work with those that have passed and pets even you talk about in the book. So it is learning and then practicing the skills. Oh, definitely. The practice is so important because you can learn 
systems, which just fascinated me when I first discovered that. You, if you tell the spirit world what you want to hear from them, they will give you that every time. If you work out some symbols with the spirit world, they will use them repeatedly to make a connection much easier and faster and succinct. It's replicable, it's evidential, and the bottom line is, is it helpful in healing? Right. I think that helpful in healing is very important because sometimes people don't understand. I, I caregived my mother the last five years, which is what brought me back to Birmingham. And with her so many nights and running up the stairs to help her, right? And then I wasn't with her when she passed. Yeah. And so for me, it was a puzzle. And since I have been able to go on and just have communication with her and put it to peace with myself and her and continually have that, and she shows up all the time, which is something else you talk about. Like it's not over. The The conversations aren't over. The connection shifts and change, right? It it does. And actually, I hear from so many people who say, I feel closer to my loved one after they pass than I did when they were here because we didn't communicate as often as we do now. And you feel their presence. They're always around us just at a different reality but they're not always interacting with us or paying attention to us i like to tell people it's like when you're with your family and maybe you're all in the living room some are sitting on the couch some across the room on a chair some may be watching tv somebody's reading somebody's knitting and you're not really tuning into each other until somebody says something so when you call out to your loved ones in spirit they look up they draw near in awareness and vice versa often when we think of a loved one it's because they're reaching out to us from across the veil. Oh, I so agree. Thank you for that explanation. Because yeah, I so agree. Like, well, where did that come from? And they just dropped in. And yeah. I do, I get messages all the time from my mother. I think a lot more than my mother. But then when I'm outside in nature, my father comes in in many other ways and I can laugh in a different, a different connection. But right. I think it's so valuable that we all know that, right? That we can. And then with the work that you're doing, we sometimes need to understand what happened or need to have those messages that it's okay. I know I had a client that lost her father and then her husband lost his sister. And so they did go to mediumship, a galley and, and got so much confirmation that then their healing was really so much more in a peaceful way and an acceptance way. So I, I would imagine that's what you're understanding as well when you work with people. Oh my goodness. I, one of the most common things I hear from my clients is how much better they sleep after a reading. And they may not realize that they were worrying or, or losing sleep over a loved one, but oh, they sleep better. I've had dozens of people tell me that a session saved their life. That mm. never fails to awe me that, that this work has given me the ability to do it on behalf of spirit to help in that way. I, I try not to take credit for any of this because it's always a cooperative engagement. They're right here. It's two-way communication, active current i always ask them to tell me current events in my client's life so they know they look at them see them know what's going on it's phenomenal the healing potential it really is it, it is just to move a little energy and get that confirmation and it really can help us with that soul i mean i think that's part of what we're here for is to just continually find that love and the growth and the you know, even sometimes the lessons underneath, right? And without any kind of judgment, for sure. Oh, the, the lessons are phenomenal. What I say in the book, mediumship, right up front, is one of the main purposes of mediumship is to allow both sides to say something in awareness that they didn't feel they got to say before they passed. So we get apologies from both sides and requests for forgiveness, uh, things that they feel were left unsaid. But I, I always tell people, you don't need a medium to say those things. Just say them from your heart and know that they're heard. But it's really awesome to have a medium can tell you back what they have to say and put some evidence in there. You know, it's not just the medium saying what you think, what they think you want to hear. Yeah, that evidence can help for sure with that confirmation. And then when they say stuff like, how did they know, right? Like, that's like the big wham, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. That. How do you know that? Well, because they're right here. <laughs> <laughs> they're right here telling me. Yes, I definitely agree. So in the book, I love their books. Um, they divide it into three parts. So the first part is your understanding, your teachings, right? The foundations of mediumship. If any question anybody had, I tried to answer it. What's it about? How does it work? Who's it for? That kind of thing. In the different types. Yeah. And then the second part is other stories. 
Yeah, two of my own examples and then 30 wonderful stories from contributors. I loved when the publisher sent me the galley copy and said, read these stories, tell me what you think. And I would read one and my husband, Ty, would be across the room and I'd say, Ty, you got to hear this story. You know, it's that kind of story that when people read it, they're going to want to share it because I call them NOEs, no other explanation moments. And the book is full of them. I'm covered with goosebumps. It's one of those books that you want to keep by your bed and pick up and put down when you need a lift, when you need a reminder that love never dies, when you need inspiration. That's what it does. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I met Dr. Brian Weiss very early on, very early in my own career here and just constantly same idea go back to that and just reminding myself too right and I know when my mom died I turned to one of his books it was just messages because I know this but when it's your own close mother father can whatever it, you still go through the grief you still have to go through that human sure. experience of it and to understand it but I do feel that when we can work in this way and recognize these messages and read these stories it helps all of us yeah one of the, the big challenges is that because we are energy fields and these are all patterns of consciousness moving, one of the things we have to do is adjust to the lack of that field physically in your environment. We have certain ways we interact with a loved one. These are habits. And when that pattern's suddenly gone, the brain actually is knocked off balance and has to find new pathways. Mm, I love that explanation. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I haven't had dreams with my mom or my dad lately. And so sometimes I wonder, well, where are they? Right. And so it's like, I need a message. Right. And then of course something will happen. I have a little bit of a water issue going on right now. And my mom had to deal with that. And so I thought, okay, well, maybe that's the message, but not oh. quite what I wanted. Right. No, not what you want to watch what you asked <laughs> not, for. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah, I know she's here and yeah, there's a community here too, that just loves her too. And I kind of stepped into some of her roles. So that always feels good as well. And then the third part, you give examples and technique and how to really practice. Really, I do. And then the eight fundamental keys to making sure that you open up to mediumship. So it's there's a, a lot to learn in the three different parts. I really like the way the whole series is organized with the same pattern. Yeah, it is very well laid out. Yeah. And I think that's important, too, because sometimes people can get a little afraid you know, sometimes people are even afraid of their intuition, but yet you do start with that talking about the clairs and how we need to access that. But really, we're the ones opening up to spirit. And you know what? The, the souls don't really lie. They tell us truth. So it does help alleviate some of that fear of what am I going to hear? <laughs> right? That kind well, of you thing. just open up two different topics there. One is people worry about protection. And I try to get into a bit of the spirituality in the book that we all being these beings of light are the light itself in expression through us. And that light is our innate protection. And there is nothing to fear mm. when you set the intention that only the greatest and highest good come from my merging with other beings of light, that only the highest spirits are allowed to blend with me as I do this work. That's exactly what happens. There's nothing to fear. And I can't remember what the second point was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just working with the Claire's, I guess, understanding one's own intuition, which sometimes I get that as well. Like, do you trust it? Oh, I, I know I have it, but yeah. It's the trust. That's the other biggest question that people bring up. How do I know this isn't my imagination? And I go into that in the book as well, but briefly, how does it feel in your heart? It comes with a knowing this is the information I need to pass on. Or if you're doing mediumship for yourself, your own loved ones, I know this is them. Nobody can take away this knowing in my heart. And then also what you're sensing is fresh and innovative and creative and not something you would have thought of. So it, that's just a very simple test, but people know you can see a butterfly flying by and that's just a butterfly. But when you happen to be thinking about your loved one and the butterfly comes up to you and flies around in a circle and then flies into your heart and flies off, that's a sign. I agree. And I remember asking that question with Dr. Brian Weiss, like, how do I know I'm not making it up? And he gave a very similar answer. Mm -hmm. And I think that did help me to trust that because I, I do have a creative mind. I know that. But yet, like you said, when it feels real and you feel your body goes strong and excited, I think that's part of it too. Yeah. To feel that. Yeah. 
You talk about the three E's. These are the three E's of, of living consciously connected to spirit, of living the awakened way, which is the, the teaching method I teach. And the first one is educate yourself. Educate yourself about mediumship, about the greater reality, about who you are as a soul. This program is helping people to do that. I have over 400 YouTube videos on my channel that, that teach people a lot of gifts on my website to educate you. Read about near-death experiences to open your mind about the greater reality and what you're a part of. That's the first E, educate. The second one, you can hear stories all day long and pretty much believe, but E, experience for yourself will change everything. And that happens by sitting in the silence, meditating, practicing presence. Those tools are all explained in the book, but that personal experience will change your life. And then as you have these experiences, the third E, engage the presences that you feel, the beings who, who you sense, but you're not quite sure, ask them, who are you? Or I really feel it's you, mom. Mom, give me a sign. Engage them yourself. Yeah, those are great for sure. And I have to say about that near-death experience, it was actually one of your students who was on the podcast, Rebecca Millsap Castle. Oh, okay. She lives here in Birmingham. She moved to Colorado now, but we were talking about her experience. And right there on the show, I had this aha moment, like I had a car wreck right before COVID. And I remember leaving my body. I knew I didn't die, but it was so profound that separated my soul right before COVID. And that really helped me to understand so much. And oh, this yeah. was just maybe two years ago, a year ago, not even that long ago. Yeah. But it was right on the show. Yeah. She is a friend of mine and she was very excited when I told her I would be interviewing you today. So Definitely, it is helpful to understand that we can have those experiences and that they can help us to open up to bigger parts of who we are, which is what happened with me. Everybody has had some kind of an NOE, a no other explanation moment. And I also know it was part of my path to have that very left brain military background serving at the highest levels because people want to believe, they want to talk about their experiences, but they're afraid of what other people will think, or they think it's all nonsense themselves. And when they hear my stories and dive into other people's stories that helps them believe and opens them to having their own NOEs. Yeah, I agree. It really helped me just talking to her and going, huh, you know, okay. And then started thinking about what happened. And I, I literally had that aha moment right there. It's like, okay. And then I started working with that energy, started going into some of what had happened and where I went and going back through. I mean, it took me to Costa Rica. It took me down to actually to Teotihuacan. It took me like finding these other teachers, which now I'm grateful for. <laughs> but in the midst of it all, you sometimes can't see. But I do think in some ways too, I mean, that's exactly what we're talking about, expanding our consciousness and how we can look at things in different perspectives. So needed right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So you mentioned your mission beyond just teaching and helping. What is the mission that you do carry with all of this? Oh, the mission is to help people live a consciously connected, divinely guided life. That is the awakened way. So I do that through teaching. The mediumship is what I do on the side that adds the evidence that provides the no other explanation stories to back up the awakened way teaching. So I have a podcast and the videos and books and recordings and teach classes and go to conferences that it's it's an all-encompassing mission what an awesome mission especially when you have that to help others for sure especially grief is hard grief is really hard and as I experienced after my mother was grief of the world and grief of my soul and then all this grief and I couldn't get myself out of it mm. and then that's when I had that near death it's like all of that started attaching more and more and then finally having that moment when, okay, landing back into my soul. And that was really big. And I think a lot of people push the grief away or don't want to do or don't know how, because it, it does hurt. And it's not like it's easy to deal with sometimes, right? right. And, yeah. and mediumship helps to reframe your grief. The awakened way shows us that we keep trying to sedate our less than positive feelings like grief or anger, fear, sadness. And that's why we feel so empty. 
because we're here to be whole beings of light, to experience the full gamut of human emotions. I was taught as a kid, no, can't feel anything less than happy, positive. And so I would turn to food when I had to fill this hole inside me. That was all the stuff trying to come out. And since I've been doing this work, I've learned to feel things fully. I, I had no choice but to feel the grief when Susan passed. And that's why I tell people that when you embrace all of this and live the awakened way, it takes you from this emptiness that so many people can't fill and don't know how to, to absolutely a fullness that we just can't contain. It's a feeling that I didn't know for most of my life. And it, that's my main mission, to help people find that wholeness, that fullness, that completeness. Yeah. Yeah. So needed right now. So needed to help all of us expand and realize where we are and really why we're here too. I think sometimes we get on that treadmill and we think this is all there is to life, but yeah. Yeah. so much more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I know through my dad, it's like, get outside. And I'm like, okay, that's why he loved to be outside. Right. And so, yeah, we can have those memories and those messages and that communication, which does then help us to understand that life does continue on. We are consciousness and it doesn't live in the body, just as you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So the book is really a great way to get all this information and to really tune into some of the exercises. Three principles of the awakened way are very simple and come as a result of mediumship. I learned them from a young man named Wolf, who I talk about in my book, Wolf's Message, and the documentary Wolf's Message will be out next year. But from mediumship and Wolf, we know that we are not only human. That's, that's the biggest discovery of all, that we are souls now. That's why mediumship is possible. We don't have to die to talk to those who have died. We're not only human. We're part of one big web connecting everything here and across the veil, which is really just another dimension, another frequency. That web shows itself in so many ways, and some of those ways are explained in the mediumship book. And then the third one is that the force that unites us, the creative and healing force of the whole universe is love. Love is when we feel that ultimate communion with each other and with all that is. It's a lack of separation. So when we learn to make a shift, that changes everything. This, the world is filled with fear right now. People talk about these being chaotic times. Yet in the past, I probably would have gone there too. Right now, I feel no fear about anything because throughout the day, I shift beyond the human story. I shift to soul awareness and we can all learn to do that. Is that escapism? Not at all. That's the relief valve. That's shifting our consciousness to the state where we're all united and where all the guidance we need comes from. So to shift your focus is like stepping out of the theater and taking a break and going and getting some popcorn so that when you step back into the theater of your life, you do so with greater peace, with some guidance and with the awareness. Okay. This too shall pass. It's very interesting right now, but I'm not going to let it swamp me. That shift, all of that is, is just made, you're made so aware of it through mediumship, but a, a general meditative practice will help you with that as well. Yeah, I think meditation helps with so many things, but I like the way you said that. And I like the way that you talk about the whole idea of that connection and the communication and what we can learn and how we can, especially right now, get out of the fear, really, yep. and raise that vibration, which is what's needed. The darkness is still kind of purging yep. out, right? And so if we can hold that light, then it can help everyone. So needed. I totally agree. I remember I did want to ask you too about your guide that you talk about. Yes, I yeah. have. I have a main sphere guide. He's my personal guide. But then I have this group called Sanaya and they give me daily messages. I've been talking to them since 2010. Wisdom that pertains to all of us about how to live our lives with greater peace, how to connect who we really are. These uh, daily Awaken Way messages are now in an app called Awaken Way. <laughs> you can go to your iPhone or your Android and search for Awaken Way. We are just about to pass 50,000 downloads. It's free. And every day you get a fresh message from spirit. My favorite part is the Oracle button because I used it myself today and yesterday. You sit and you go to your heart and you ask a question. 
and you say, okay, spirit, what message do I need to hear now? And you push the button and it goes through over 5,000 messages in the archives and up comes an amazing answer. Both times I got exactly what I needed. Or some people, they'll ask for a message from a loved one and they'll get a message from their loved one's birthday or their wedding anniversary. It's stunning how that works, but uh, check mm -hmm. out the app. But I channel my guides. I just uh, went live yesterday with a video called The Afterlife. What can you expect? And it's a channel download from Sanaya all about the different levels of experience that we go through when we pass. So mm -hmm. very grateful definitely. to the guides for all of their wisdom and their help. Mm, I love that. I will definitely have to look at that. And I love that you even say too, like sometimes you ask the oracles too, like show me a message because we're doing our work too. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every time I have an issue and I have my own challenges because that's why we're here, right? Relationship issues. <laughs> usually. And I just go into meditation into the silence and I ask what's going on here what am I not seeing what pattern is in me is causing this to come up repeatedly how can you help me oh my gosh the insights and I share those insights that apply to all of us monthly I call it my monthly connection webinar every month on a Tuesday night we gather and I share the latest teaching from spirit and this incredible community of people that have gathered for that very awesome. great. Yeah. So where can we find you? It's 333, my favorite number as I look up. There we go. Yes, where I am. <laughs> yep. Yes. Besides, uh, of course, uh, my website is my name, SuzanneGeesman.com. And I always have events going on, live events and upcoming events, online events. They're right on the homepage under the opening okay. banner. Even a cruise, an Awaken Way cruise coming up in uh, late March where my gosh, people's lives have been transformed by the last two that I did because you get away from it all and 14 hours of workshops on those events, some conferences with the Common Sentience authors, one in San Francisco in February, I believe, and Atlanta later in the summer. Lots of Yes. Stuff. Yeah, I'm hoping to make the Atlanta one for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, how fascinating. So much work. And again, just from where you started and then opening up to this work and now what you're doing, I think that's just really awesome. Because again, I think sometimes you go, you have to be gifted, but as you've shown, we can learn this. And then you've developed a system that is making it even easier, but it does take practice. You know, sometimes again, I don't hear my messages while you're sitting quietly. Well, oh, I have to do that. Like, yeah, we do. Right. It takes yeah. commitment, but oh gosh, as you know, once you open your heart and your soul to all that's available from spirit, it's transformational and you, you don't want to go back. You want to make the effort. If only three minutes a day, my sip of the divine that I talk about in the book and, and a video on YouTube has changed people's lives. I even have kindergarten classes doing the sip of the divine with their teacher. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. How powerful for sure. Yeah. Well, Suzanne, you've shared so much with us. Thank you so much. And I'm so grateful to meet you and just to have your work come out even more. I know it helps me in the work that I do as well. Okay. And yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, that's why I started this podcast was to help educate those around me about what is going on and more and more. And you even get into the whole idea of neuroscience and quantum physics in the book and how it explains what we do. And I think that's very valuable too to help put some of that disbelief away. It's science. There's, this is absolutely science-based, but I'm not a scientist. So I call it 21st century spirituality where we combine science, right. let the scientists do their work and you can merge it with spirituality and you get the whole picture of that this is real. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I sometimes say spirituality in your everyday life, take it to work. <laughs> you can't leave it at home, right? Yeah. One of my missions this year is bridging that business and spirituality. So as we go to close, I do like to come back around and would ask if you could just leave our listeners with one last uplifting thought about mediumship and how you feel it can help empower the spirit right now. Well, it teaches us that we are never alone. And that's the problem. The number one challenge of all of us, humanity, is we, we look at the objective world, we see separation, and we think we have to do everything alone. But through mediumship, through spirituality, you come to know that by going within, you find our connectedness. You find that we are intimately interconnected and 
We are not separate from God, our source, consciousness, call it whatever you want. There is an underlying fabric and we are part of that. We are not alone. We are all connected. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. So even in my flooded water with my mother, we are all connected. <laughs> A little humor. Yes. Thank you so much for your work and for being here with us today to your spirit. Namaste. Great for the spirit. Yeah. It's an honor to share. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We are all connected. Working in these expanded states of consciousness can help you heal and understand so many things about life and your loved ones. Consciousness doesn't live in the body. It continues on and on and on. The time is now to learn how you can open up to all your abilities, to trust and to feel that connection to all life. All the links for Suzanne will be in the show notes. Again, I invite you to reach out and schedule a spiritual upgrade breakthrough call with me. It is helpful to have someone by your side. Thanks again for listening. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman, to your spirit. Namaste. My next online soul work class is coming up, learning to read your Akashic records. This year, I'll be expanding the course to include channeling the energy of your star people. Get on my wait list now for the program. Hint, hint, Black Friday bonuses are coming.